Hello, in this video we're going to do a supply and demand tax problem that involves using a table. Here is our market. We got the price, we got the quantity demanded by buyers, and the quantity supplied by sellers. Without a tax, what is the equilibrium price and quantity? We want to find where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied, and that occurs at 50, so that is going to be our equilibrium quantity, and the corresponding price is the equilibrium price. Now let's assume there is a $4 per unit tax placed in this market. What is the effective price paid by buyers and the effective price paid by sellers? This $4 tax creates a $4 gap between what buyers pay and sellers receive. At this $4 gap, the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. So as we learned in this market, the equilibrium price is $5 and the equilibrium quantity is 50 without a tax but with the tax there is going to be a gap between what buyers pay in general taxes cause buyers to pay more than the no tax equilibrium price so at one time buyers were paying five dollars so they're going to be paying more than five dollars after the tax so the effective price for buyers will rise and for sellers, sellers will receive less than the no tax equilibrium price. So we expect sellers to receive something less than $5. So we're trying to find a $4 gap between what buyers pay and the sellers receive after the tax is imposed where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. So notice here that if the price is $7, quantity demanded is 30 and if we subtract 4 from $7 we have a price of $3 and the quantity supplied is 30 so that is going to be the effective price that buyers pay after the tax buyers will now be paying $7 buying 30 units sellers will be receiving $3 and be providing 30 units so the equilibrium quantity after the tax is going to be 30 so the buyer's effective price, once again, is $7. The coin demanded is 30 The tax burden on buyers would be $2. Before, buyers were only paying $5 for this product. In the face of the tax, they're paying $2 more, or $7. Seller's effective price, okay, there's this $4 gap. Taxes create a wedge between what buyers pay and sellers receive. So seller's effective price with the tax now is going to be $3. And at $3, sellers would be willing to sell 30 units. So the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. That is our new equilibrium in the face of the tax. The seller's tax burden. Sellers at one time were getting $5. Now they're getting exactly $2 less for each unit sold. So the tax burden is 5 minus 3 or 2. And if we wanted to calculate the tax revenue, uh, 30 units are being bought and sold, and the government is collecting a $4 tax per unit, so the government is collecting $120 of tax revenue. Let's move on to another example. Okay, slightly different numbers here. You'll notice here that the equilibrium price is $4, $4 and the equilibrium quantity is 70 Let's assume there is a $3 per unit tax this time in this market. What is the effective price paid by buyers and the effective price paid by sellers? So once again, the equilibrium price without a tax is $4. We expect buyers to pay more and sellers to receive less in general. So we're trying to find a $3 gap between what buyers pay and the sellers receive where the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. And looks like here, this gap right here between $6 and $3, okay, that, that gap is $3. And you'll notice here at $6, consumers want to buy 50. At $3, sellers are willing to sell 50. So that is going to be our new equilibrium in the face of a tax. So this $3 tax creates a $3 gap between what buyers pay and sellers receive. At this $3 gap, the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. You'll notice other $3 gaps will not uh, lead to an equilibrium. So if buyers were paying $8 and sellers receiving $5, the quantity demanded would be well less than the quantity supplied. 
Or another example, if buyers were paying $5 and sellers were receiving $2, the quantity demanded would exceed the quantity supplied. So only at a price of $6, the effective price for buyers of $6 and the effective price of sellers of $3, do we get this $3 gap where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. So the buyer's effective price got a $2 tax burden this time. The equilibrium price was $4. Buyers are now paying $2 more. The seller's effective price is $3, bringing 50 units to the market. The seller's tax burden is $1. Sellers at one time were receiving $4 per unit. Now they're receiving an effective price of $3 per unit, a $1 difference. Tax revenue here, 50 units are being taxed at $3 each. And that is it. All right, I hope you found this video helpful.